Hi all, my name is Alan George Phillip and I am an undergraduate research assistant in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Wichita State University. Uh, my research is the capillary flow measurement of 3D printed metallic brick. Uh, my main role is to characterize different 3D printed metallic bricks and sometimes even furnace centered copper bricks using something called a rate of rise test. So as you can see on the top right image here, you have the leak structure and there's a fluid inside the leak structure. When it's in contact with the hot area, the fluid evaporates, evaporizes and it expands over to the other sides. And, uh, and, and once it's on the colder region, it condenses and forms the fluid and the wicking capability of the leak structure uh, allows it to move from the cold area to back to the hot area. So uh, there have been many different approaches uh, to manufacturing the wick structures. Uh, some examples are the furnace sintered wicks or axial groove wicks, screen wicks, uh, template sintered and composite wicks. Uh, all of these approaches have different limitations such as the lack of control over the geometry or low capillary pumping or complex manufacturing, etc. So uh, additively manufactured wicks is a relatively new approach and hasn't been fully understood just yet. So uh, doing my research, uh, we can get a better understanding on the optimal pore geometries and pore networks, as well as the process parameters uh, that corresponds to 3D printed uh, metallic wick structures. <clears throat> so uh, the main goal, the main goal of this research is to manufacture an ideal wick structure and these wick structures have two properties which is a high permeability and high capillary pressure but these are contrasting traits because high capillary pressure means smaller pore sizes high permeability means bigger pore sizes and so to achieve them both we make a non-uniform pore size wick structure using a metallic 3d printer so uh, the 3D printed samples, basically there's uh, two types that we're going to use. Uh, they are the lattice samples and the center samples. So the center samples basically focuses on the change in process parameters, uh, whereas the lattice samples focus on the change in the pore geometries. And the working fluid that we're going to use is uh, an FC72 fluid, which is basically a heat transfer fluid, which is very thermally and chemically stable fluid used in many electronic applications. So some of the keywords are, uh, first one is porosity. It shows you the void space inside the porous media. And uh, you can easily find it by comparing the mass of the wick structure with the fluid inside it and the mass of the wick structure without the fluid inside it. Uh, another uh, term is the effective capillary meniscus radius. And uh, this is basically the curvature of the capillary meniscus. It can be approximated to find the effective pore radius and is uh, represented by the below equation. Uh, sigma here is the surface tension. Rho is the, uh, rho is the density. Sigma is the surface tension. And H EQ is the equilibrium height, which is the acceleration due to gravity. And permeability is this character K here. And uh, it actually shows you the ability of porous media to allow fluids to pass through it. And it can be estimated using this uh, ordinary differential equation. And uh, yep, uh, T here is time. And yep, so there's a relation between the height of the fluid inside the weight structure and the mass. Uh, it's given by this equation down here. Uh, a here is the cross-sectional area of the wick structure. So you have the previous equation, and if you make a small substitution uh, for H, then you get the second equation. So this is the actual experimental test uh, setup. So you have a glass tube, you have wick structure, and you have the working fluid. Uh, we just wait for 10 to 20 minutes before the fluid is fully saturated and then you just slowly lower the wick structure into the working fluid and you measure how fast the fluid rises up the wick structure. 
so we did the same thing. We started off with one of the 3D printed wigs. Uh, it's called the Lattice 5 sample, L5 sample. And the FC72 was chosen as the working fluid. And uh, we lowered the sample into the working fluid. And we started measuring the, the fluid uptake through the wig structure using an optical camera. Uh, and we found out that it was very difficult uh, to find the wetting front. It was very difficult to see the fluid go up. And uh, the, it was even worse in the other 3D printed samples. So this was the best sample we had. And even that one proved to be difficult uh, to work with in terms of an optical camera. So then we switched to a uh, we switched to an IR camera and we were able to see uh, something for the wetting front. If you see here, you had this dark area, which is, we assume, uh, corresponds to the wetting front. But uh, this is in an ambient setting, so there is no glass tube and we don't have saturation. So that's the issue in this case. So yeah, this is a comparison between the optical and uh, the IR, both in ambient condition. As you can see, they diverge at around 10 seconds, and uh, we believe that's because it's not saturated and there's a good amount of evaporation happening. So we switched over to a uh, another setup where things are sealed. There's an IR filter here. However, uh, we try to saturate it and seal it and remove evaporation, but there is still some, some small openings down there and uh, that made it very difficult to conduct these experiments. There is uh, even fluid loss through that, so we uh, gave up on that. Uh, and we started using a mass balance and measured the mass instead of uh, visually finding the height. So uh, we first measured the rate at which the evaporation takes place, and we got this plot here, and then we found the rate at which the fluid goes up the wick structure and we plotted it on the right hand image down there. Uh, this was also in ambient condition so we had to minimize fluid evaporation, we had to seal the setup and so on. So that's what we did. We put the setup on a mass balance and we sealed it or we attempt to seal it using a glass tube with a rubber base. Uh, we chose a cylindrical copper center wicks uh, for now, and we found the evaporation again, and we got these two plots here. Uh, the evaporation rate was found to be something around 0 0.001 uh, in both cases. So we tried it again over a much longer uh, time interval. We tried it three different times, and we got a evaporation rate of negative point. Uh, 00133 gram per second and uh, we tried the rate of rise uh, the mass based rate of rise on the cylindrical wick structure uh, there's two different types there is a 550 micrometer particle diameter wick and 350 micrometer particle diameter wick and uh, we got the following graphs. As you can see, the blue one and the red one are two different trials, and they are not the exact same. So this is the problem we are facing right now. The uh, the experiments are not consistent for some reason, and we believe that's due to some fluid evaporation uh, that's taking place somewhere. So uh, currently, uh, what we're trying to do, or the future work that we're going to do, is we're going to use uh, rectangular copper center fix and these fix have known properties that can be measured easily using optical rate of rise. So we're going to use the mass based rate of rate of rise on this uh, rectangular wick structure and we're going to do it over and over again using trial and error until we we'll get a consistent way of measuring it, uh, a consistent result. And once we get the consistent result, we'll apply it on the 3D printed wick structure. We use the mass-based mass uh, rate of rise on the 3D printed wick structure. And uh, this will provide us with valuable insights on the capillary performance associated with the uh, various pore sizes as well as pore connectivity. And uh, 
uh, acknowledgments to my advisor, Dr. Gisit Huang, and also Dr. Raju Nair. Uh, these are both professors in the Mechanical Engineering Department at Wichita State, and uh, Munyandiri Ekpo, or Kelvin, is a graduate student who helped me with experiments uh, using software and presentations. Also, Mohammed or Paim is a graduate student who helped me understand what's going on in the research. And also thanks to the Dean's office for funding uh, my research. So thank you very much. And I hope uh, this helped you understand more about my research.